All right, everyone, it's time for Occult Literature, video number 217, The Mind Telegraph, an interesting little booklet from the very dawn of the 20th century, 1901, actually. Uh, 34 pages, so it's fairly short. This is a very, very bizarre work. In the beginning of it, there's a translator's preface, Now, there's, which doesn't make sense because it appears that the initial edition that it's referring to may not actually exist. It's claiming to have been translated from a very popular German edition. But I could find nothing about the author, I could find nothing about the translator, supposedly, and I could find nothing about this work in, a, in any German. That could be an example of one of these backstory situations where it's misattributed, much like the, you know, like the, the Ars Gosha has something to do with Solomon. Well, no, it was written far after that period. Link in the description of my edition of this work on Amazon, second and third links to my books, blogs. Uh, again, quite intro definitely worth reading despite its length. Uh, initially, it was a lot longer because it was cluttered with ads for other things. Uh, I decided to redact that because, I mean, a lot of its mailing addresses mail off for, uh, you know, super hypnosis third edition or something. It's like the mailing address doesn't work. The prices certainly are totally different now. Do, do, do the uh, British even use, like, shillings and stuff anymore? I don't think that they do. I know they use, like, pounds, but I think... Don't they accept Euro, too? I don't even know. Uh, basically, the gist of this particular work is, at first it goes into a bit of philosophy, like a bulleted list, fairly expansive on, on topics like communication at distance, um, through, through telepathic and spiritist means, anyway. The use of willpower, uh, basically the human mind in a more paranormal, a supernatural sense. That's the first part. It very quickly begins to go into what I would class as likely occult fiction, where ostensibly the author or an avatar the author has concocted is talking about all these various principles and events related to the use of will, like saying, well, you know, uh, I, I was in, you know, I can't remember, the uh, France or something, and I said that I would tame a lion, and all of these royals were there, and they bet all sorts of money on me, and, uh, you know, I'd never been around a lion before, and I went into the cage, and I stared it down and commanded it with my iron will and stuff like that, like in a paranormal sense and won all sorts of money and then became like the favorite of an imam, I guess, in, in Morocco at the time, actually, and had a palace uh, and, and stuff like that. Uh, it ends with an admonition, however, to the reader. Uh, after spending about, you know, almost 30 pages of length uh, talking about all the wonderful things that, that the author has achieved, uh, or translator, whatnot, in regards to the use of willpower. Then it says, but, you know, ultimately I'm still kind of miserable because I used my power for all of these uh, mundane purposes. Yeah, here I am, I've got the money and the palace and the girl and stuff, but I'm, I should have used that power for wisdom and, and to, to seek spiritual things because I've got all this high-minded power and, and I wasted my time, basically. It's a very, very interesting concept, uh, actually, and, and that admonition, that sort of spiritual admonition, uh, definitely of import when you really think about it. That is an important thing within the spirituality uh, of some of these occult works. They contain a cautionary message. Now, again, this is probably occult fiction, uh, at least in large part, but it does have some overlap with, like, the psychic art sort of stuff, so interesting nonetheless. Again, link in the description of my edition of this work on Amazon. Second and third links are to my books, blogs. That's about all. Peace out.